So, thank you. Uh, first of all, uh, how about a round of applause for Jack and Pat? Thank you guys for having us here. Your beautiful abode. Um, one of the cool things about this, and uh, I only Jack, I, well, I only found this out since since Jack and I were talking about putting this together. Uh, oh, and I also want to thank Stephanie Mitchell for all her help. Where's Steph? I'm it's taking your picture. Right here. Here. <laughs> <laughs> hanging from the hanging from the rafters. Um, thank you, Steph, for all your help and, and helping to pull us to get all together as well. Um, so one of the things that I did not know about Jack was that his great grandfather was a member of Congress, and in fact, his great grandfather, who built this house, was the last member of Congress from the Three Village area. Oh. Oh. So this is, uh, we're going to fix that. That's right, here we go. <laughs> so it seems particularly appropriate that we would be here today. The crazy thing was that Jack's great grandfather served in the 1840s. So that was the last time we've had a member of Congress from the Three Village area. Uh, it's, it's over, you know, 170 some odd years. So um, it's great to be here. It's great to be here with so many friends. It's great to meet so many uh, new folks as well. Uh, Meg is going to help me uh, talk a little bit about why I'm running for Congress, right? <laughs> At the end of the day, it is about Meg and Sarah and Peter, my kids, as well as all our kids and grandkids. Because we now have a Congress and a situation in Washington where there's not much getting done, is there? And we have a situation in Washington where we have some pretty scary people running for president. Yes. <laughs> I would actually make that singular. Uh, <laughs> um, but we also have here on Long Island, here in Suffolk County, a member of Congress who has been in our, our representative for the last year and a half and has quite frankly been one of the leaders in the Tea Party movement. He goes to Washington and we don't hear much from him here because he's actually on Fox News all the time. If you all woke up and want to check out Fox News, that's where he is. Um, in fact, the New York Post did a, a um, Expose on him recently, uh, and now New York, New York Post is not exactly a liberal, progressive <laughs> thing, uh, uh, publication, but they, they, they called him absentee Lee because he'd been so on, on, on Fox News so much that he was missing his hearings in the Foreign Affairs Committee with regard to how to fight ISIS. So we need a member of Congress who A, will actually show up, but B, also represents the values of our area. And this is one of only five districts in the entire country that voted for President Obama twice but as a freshman Republican member of Congress. Only five in the whole country. And we have, we're in one. And the district here goes from Smithtown all the way out to the end. So it's a huge area. And I am constantly all over the place. And uh, Kate is uh, doing a tremendous job of uh, keeping our family together through all of this. Um, so uh, thanks to her and thanks to all of you who are helping out in many ways. But, but for me, this is personal. My background is I was a federal prosecutor for a number of years. Um, at working, fighting corporate fraud, representing our country around the world, working with our allies overseas on, on, on international law enforcement, working to help fight the war on terror. Um, I helped us, assisted the team that prosecuted uh, one of Osama bin Laden's associates, uh, Al Qaeda associates. Uh, since that time, I've been a state prosecutor helping to fight healthcare fraud and, and healthcare organizations that are working off. Our kids and our grandkids are growing up in a very different world than we grew up in. Right? Where you can get all the information you need by asking your phone. But we need to make sure our kids are ready for the next generation of jobs. We need to make sure that the next generation of jobs are created here on Long Island. We live in a special place, but we live in a very expensive place. We need to make sure that we have the next generation of jobs. We need to have the right kind of housing so that folks who are starting out and those who are sort of done with their single family uh, time period uh, in homeowners have a place to be able to live to still be able to afford here. It's also why it's critically important that we make sure we preserve, protect, Social Security, Medicare, and, and, and all the programs for our seniors, because at the end of the day, we need those programs to be able to afford to live here. So my background was first as a prosecutor for a number of years, working on behalf of our government, like I said, around the country and around the world. But more recently, over the last seven or eight years, I've been working to start and build companies, small businesses. And we need to do more of that here in our country, and we need to do more of that here on Long Island. Now, at the end of the day, we have an exciting opportunity. First of all, to take the congressional seat back to the Three Village so for the first time since uh, great grandpa um, Strong. Um, but also really, to, uh, most importantly, to turn out of office someone who's really been uh, uh, backwards when it comes to uh, the leadership. Uh, Lee Zeldin has as a hat as his guest speaker at his swearing-in ceremony. You can pick one to be your mentor and your guest speaker, and he picked Ted Cruz. That's who we had as his guest speaker at his swearing-in ceremony. This is the kind of person we have elected to office, unfortunately. We have an opportunity now to turn him out. And particularly in this year, 
this is the right year to do it. Democrats turn out strong this year, and I am the right person to, t to take him on, not only because of my background of being involved in the federal government as a prosecutor, I also advised in the Congress and how to help create jobs, but also got a real background in creating jobs both here and around the country. Now, the important thing is I also got the nomination of the Independence Party. Now, the Independence Party was choosing between me and Congressman Zeldin, and they chose to give me their nomination. And that's important because the Independence Party gets about 3 or 4% of the vote in November. So by nominating me, we get an extra 3 or 4% on the Democratic side. If I do not get the Democratic nomination, that, that 3 or 4% is going to go over to Zeldin because he will then pick up the, Demo the Independence Party nomination. I have it as long as I win the Democratic nomination. So I need your help to win that nomination. That primary that we're having is in three weeks. Now I have the endorsement of virtually every Democratic elected official in this entire district from here to East Hampton. Um, there's, there's 17 or so Democratic elected officials and 16 of them have endorsed me. Uh, one of them stay neutral, that's fine. Um, <laughs> but every Democratic organization, every Democratic club that's endorsed has endorsed me, the major environmental group has endorsed me, um, the major unions who've gotten involved have endorsed me, et cetera. But at the end of the day, we need people to actually show up and vote. And we need your help to A, vote for those of you who are Democrats, but B, to help us spread the word. And we have a lot of work to do in the next three weeks because we are expecting somewhere in the neighborhood of maybe 15,000 votes across the entire eastern half of Suffolk County. So that is a lot of finding needles and haystacks, getting people to take five minutes to go out and vote. So we need your help in a couple of different ways. And Tyler does have a sign-up sheet. We'd appreciate, appreciate you signing up if you're interested in helping us. One, of course, we do need contributions. This is a very expensive race. We've raised over a million dollars so far. Um, we gotta keep, keep building on that. But finding voters and, and identifying voters who are gonna be with us and actually getting them to come out to the polls for five minutes on June 28th is really what this election is all about. So we need your help uh, over these last final three weeks with helping make phone calls, helping to identify neighbors who you know who you're willing to touch. I mean, if everyone in this room, I'll give you one example. If we have, I don't know, 30, probably more more people here. If everyone in this room would even just identify uh, 10 people, right? That's 300 or so voters we would touch, right? And if we have maybe as low as 10,000 people voting in this election, we here in this room could touch 3% of the electorate just here in this room. Dang. So that's what we're talking about in terms of the size of the vote and, and, and how important person-to-person -person contact is. What does that look like? We have a lot of people here who have never identified. What does that mean? Yeah, so what we do is we, we have people, we have phone banks in uh, working almost every day, right? Yep, every day. Seven every, days a week can come in. Yeah, we have in, in Farmingville we have every day and in our Lake Grove office, uh, which is right near the mall, we're doing it right now two nights a week, though I guess we're going to up that for the last couple there, of weeks. Yeah, Thursdays and Sundays now, like there's one tonight at 5.30 if anyone wants to come. Right. Let me know. <laughs> um, and, and we're calling Democrats, because at the end of the day only Democrats can vote, only people who are actually registered Democrats. So we're calling Democrats in the district to tell them about me and to ask them if they're able to, willing to support. And for those who need some convincing, we you know, try to convince them. Um, there's that, and there's also knocking on doors. So we, particularly in the Three Village area, this is a right area for us to get, there's a lot of Democrats in this area, we need them to come out and vote. And so we need help for people just knocking on doors in their neighborhoods even. Um, you know, Knock on 20 or 30 doors for us in your neighborhood, and that's a real help as well. So, um, so those are the two main ways, phone calls and knocking on doors that people can really be helpful. Yes, Mary. Hi. Um, for those of us who are going to be away on the 28th, yes. it is not too late to write in for an absentee ballot. It's really easy. I just did it. Excellent. Great point. Very great point. So the election is right after school gets out. In, in their wisdom, the state of New York has set this um, right after school gets out and right before 4th of July weekend. So many people will be away. Um, it's, that's why the turnout's gonna be so low. It's, it's the only thing on the ballot. Um, it's at this time when you know, a lot of people will be away on vacation or heading into the 4th of July weekend. And Mary's absolutely right. Absentee ballot, do we have applications here with us today? We don't, but if you give me your name, I'll personally deliver you one like tonight. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> so. And that's, what, that's what the amazing thing about this. This is like democracy in its purest sense. I mean, really, 10,000 people may be voting, maybe as high as 15, but I mean, that's what we're talking about. So it's really like every vote does count. And they might even count the absentees. Oh, they'll definitely count the absentees, yeah. They'll definitely count the absentees in this election, absolutely. Um, because, you know, we have made a push to, because some people are gonna be away, to get people to just take, you know. But the application for, or the, the absentee is actually a two-step process. You have to write to the Board of Elections, which is it's just a form, and say, you know, I'm gonna you be away, and then they send. You don't have to attach proof. 
Right. You just say I'm going to be away or something like that, and then they they, they send you the ballot back and you can send it back. So it's a you can also drive there. there. You can go there. You can go to the board of elections. So you could go to Yapank uh, to the board of elections to vote right. in person. That's true. So anyway, I'm happy to answer a question or two. I know it's it's uh, it's it's uh, it's warm, <laughs> and I appreciate you all being here. But more than anything, I just ask for your help. We only have three weeks to go. This is the kind of race where if I get the Democratic nomination and combine that with the Independence Party nomination, we have a tremendous opportunity to win in November. But the hardest step is actually the one that's coming up, which is actually winning this, winning this election with very few people going to show up in three weeks. So we'd love your help. To, you know, if you can just you know, contribute a couple hours on the phones over the next couple weeks, a couple hours of knocking on doors, that will make all the difference. So anyway, so thank you. Thank you for being here. Thank you for caring. And thank you to Jack. And Jack.